Have you ever felt that you were walking through a dry time? Have you ever felt like you're opening the word and it's not as life-giving or you're going into your prayer meeting and you're, you're just not able to engage with the Lord? I'm telling you, friends, that there are wilderness seasons that the Lord allows us to walk through that will ultimately be seasons of supernatural blessing and grace. And as we talk about the importance of the wilderness in this week's podcast, I know that you're going to be blessed because God speaks in the wilderness. Welcome to another Portions podcast. You've been with us through Genesis, through Exodus, through Leviticus, and today we start the book of Numbers. Nathan, so great to be with you. We've made it three-fifths of the way through the Torah. Wow. And every week has been super encouraging that we've gotten to do it together. And we've done really most weeks together this season. It's been a treat, man. Thanks for letting me be a part, Scott. It's been so great having you. This As we start the book of Numbers, Numbers is kind of divided into three sections. They have, first section is chapters 1 through 10, and that's around Mount Sinai. Then they travel. Then the second section, uh, section is around the wilderness of Paran. And then the third section, 22 to 36, is the wilderness of Moab. So you've got Mount Sinai and then wilderness, wilderness, wilderness. Wow. And it's really, really interesting because the first few words in this section is that the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness. So let's just talk about wilderness for a second. Each one of these um, portions have a Hebrew name that's associated with it. We don't talk about this every week, but specifically this week, yeah. the name is really interesting. And the name typically comes from words in the first few uh, sentences or the first few words in English, which are in the wilderness. Talk about the Hebrew word, if you would, for a moment. Yeah, so uh, Bamidbar would be in Hebrew in the wilderness, right? The midbar. The midbar. So the word midbar would be wilderness, ba being in the, right? So this is so fascinating to me, Scott, as I started learning a little bit of Hebrew. And I'm no scholar, but what I've learned has blown my mind. You're more scholarly than I am. Oh, Dr. you just stopped Dr. Right Dr. Now. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but midbar, the, the word for wilderness, comes from the root word davar, okay, which is the word speak. Mm. So think wow. about it. In the wilderness, when you are saying wilderness, it's coming from the word speak and how often in Scripture, including our portion today, but all through the, the Testament, that God speaks in the wilderness. Wow. We may not always love being in the wilderness season, mm -hmm. but it is true that revelation, almost every time we see someone going into the wilderness in Scripture, they come out with revelation. Wow. And I believe this is something just the way God operates. He wants us to trust him in those places. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to see that in this portion. In the I love that this starts out by saying God speaks in the wilderness because further on in the book of Numbers, we're going to see that the devil speaks in the wilderness too. Sure. Through grumbling, through complaining, through doubt. Oh, yeah. If we can start off with the foundation that God speaks in the wilderness and our ears are attentive to him, yeah. Then when the enemy speaks, yes. did God really say, you're never going to make it into the land. There are giants in the land. All the speaking that the enemy does in the book of Numbers would be totally and completely eradicated if we did like Moses and listen to the voice of God speaking. Yeah. So let's just talk about the wilderness because so much of the book of Numbers is written yeah. while Israel is in the wilderness. Yeah. Do you... Uh, I mean, it's kind of a biblical pattern when you think about it. Oh, sure. So what's, what are some things that might stand out to you with regard to the wilderness? Well, you know, anytime uh, we're in the middle of something that doesn't seem comfortable, right? Uh, the wilderness by itself doesn't seem very comfortable, mm. right? They're not able to settle. They're on the move, you know? Mm. I think it's fascinating too, just what you just said about, you know, the enemy speaking in the wilderness and how if we're not careful, it can be hard to discern those things. The first thing we see in the book of what we call numbers yeah. is God takes has them take a census. And I just think this is beautiful because God is saying in this destabilizing, unsettled time as we're moving through, I just want you to know I see every single one wow. of you. Wow. I see every single one of you. I don't want anyone to be lost. We see that being a pattern too. I don't want anyone to be misplaced. Yeah. Yes, we're going into the wilderness, yeah. 
but I see all of you and I'm gonna make sure you're provided for, taken care of. I, I think I, it's important. I love it. God doesn't need us <laughs> to take a census. No. But the fact that he tells them to take a census is really, really cool because hes it's almost like he's saying, listen, I see you, yeah. but I need you to know that I see know you. Know that I see you. So that's really, really wow. good. It's really, really good. Um, I'm just thinking of like the wilderness. I'm thinking of John the baptizer, a voice in the wilderness crying, prepare you the way of the Lord. I think of Jesus whose ministry at 30 actually began. He was baptized by that very John, baptizes him. Right after he was baptized, it says that Jesus was led by the Spirit yes. into the wilderness. Yes. So, I mean, many times we think we're in the wilderness because, you know, God wants to do a little spanking on us. What if his Spirit yes. is leading us into the wilderness? Because yes. there's something about the wilderness that prepares us really for his commissioning. So, look, if Jesus spends 40 years in the wilderness, Moses spends 40 years on the backside of a desert, but Moses came out with God's presence, right? How am I gonna know? You take your staff, my authority's in there. Yeah. Jesus, after 40 days, it says he returned in the power yeah. of the Spirit. Yeah. Many of us wanna shortchange our wilderness times. God, I've been here 39 years and four months, or Lord, I've been here five minutes. Yeah. But what if there's something about our wilderness that's really setting us up to be the very people God intended us to be? And it's where God's gonna speak to us. If I yeah. could guarantee you, and I'm not trying to do that right now, but if yeah. I could guarantee you that if you go into this uncomfortable, uncertain season that you're gonna hear the voice of God like you've never heard it before, mm. and you're gonna come out with great clarity, would you be willing to go in, yeah. right? That, and I think what God is saying to us is, you're never outside of my reach. Yeah, I see every single one of you. Beautiful. And it's in the wilderness. Often, Scott, I, you could probably say this, I know I can say this for myself, it's in those places of uncertainty and difficulty and challenge, and we would even say maybe a little bit destabilizing, um, and we see this in culture. We just went through a pandemic. You know, you and I remember 9-11 and all that happened in a destabilizing time. People run to the Lord. They want to, what is God saying? Mm. When things kind of start getting back to normal, churches were packed after 9-11. Yeah. Churches were packed as soon as people could meet after, during the pandemic and after. Well, when things started kind of getting back to normal, all of a sudden it's like, well, we got a lot going on. I think sometimes the Lord allows the wilderness to wake us up, to pay attention so we'll hear his voice. Yeah. He speaks in the wilderness. We don't like being in the wilderness. Yeah, some of the some of the most uh, challenging times for me and my family, uh, we've got five kids, but at the time that I'm referring to, we had four. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were living in, um, in a, a, a time where we weren't getting paid. So, here I was working as hard as I've ever worked, and there were times when I wasn't getting paid. Yeah. And I wasn't like, man, I can't believe I'm not getting paid, but I was like, Lord, what are you doing? Yeah. You, you called us here. Yeah. But Nathan, it was in those times, it, and there were other people who weren't getting paid as well. For whatever reason, we experienced the real blessing of the Lord in that season, so much so, that it really put something firmly established in our hearts to see God as provider. We would have never known God as provider if we weren't stretched in this wilderness of not getting paid. Yeah. Unfortunately, there were other people that went through a similar kind of season and they're not doing that great with the Lord today. It just is, it's kind of an interesting thing to me that the wilderness is really, it's a sifting kind of place. Look, in the wilderness, there were people who turned their back on the Lord Absolutely. and never received their promise. Right. In the wilderness, there were people who trusted God, yes. Joshua, Caleb, who entered in and received the very thing that God has promised. So our wilderness times are very, very important because if we're listening to God who yeah. speaks in the wilderness, we're gonna say, we can take the land. Yeah. If we're listening to the enemy, there are giants in the land, you can't take the land. We're gonna miss out on our destiny. So may we 
fly through our wilderness times, crying out to God, knowing that he hears our, vo- hears our voice, and then really put our trust and confidence in him. So, so we've got this census. Every group is numbered, but there's one group that's exempt. <laughs> Numbers chapter 1, verse 47. The Levites, however, were not numbered among them, For the Lord had spoken to Moses saying, verse 49, only the tribe of Levi you shall not number, nor shall you take the census among the sons of Israel, but you shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony and over all its furnishings. Verse 51, when the tabernacle is is to set out, the Levites shall take it down. When the tabernacle encamps, the Levites shall set it up. Verse 53, the Levites shall camp around the tabernacle of the testimony so that there will be no wrath on the congregation of the sons of Israel. So the Levites shall shall keep charge of the tabernacle of the testimony. Okay, one group in Israel is not to be counted, Mm -hmm. to be separated. It's the Levites who we know as the priests. God separated the children of the tribe of Levi. And in verse, in chapter two, when God is talking about everywhere where the, the children of Israel shall be, in the middle, there's the tent, God's presence. Yes. Surrounded by the tent on the east, the south, the north, and the west are the 12 tribes of Israel. But the Levites, verse 33 of chapter two, The Levites, however, were not numbered among the sons of Israel, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The Levites were watching over one thing, and that was the presence of the Lord. Why were the Levites separated? Well, they're separated out because God wants to have uh, a a tribe that's a priesthood, right? We talked about in a previous portion how God really initially he wanted the firstborn of each tribe yeah firstborn of each family in every tribe yeah to minister before him but because of the sin in exodus with the golden calf incident yeah all the people's sinned except the tribe of levi right. we can look over in verse 11 of chapter 3 here in numbers it says the lord also said to moses i've taken the levites from among the israelites in place yeah. of the first male offspring of every israelite woman the levites are mine for all the firstborn are mine. Mm. When I struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, I set apart for myself every firstborn in Israel, whether human or animal, they are to be mine. I am the Lord. Mm. And he says, I'm going to redeem the firstborn of all the tribes by just utilizing all of the tribe of Levi because they were set apart in the golden calf incident in in Exodus. So he wants to have a people to represent him, to represent him, and they're the ones that care for the tabernacle. Yeah, I love that. I'm I'm trying to find the the golden calf incident. I'm, I'm having a little bit of a hard time. It's obviously in the book of Exodus, but it's interesting because when God, when God was talking about, um, who is going to represent me mm-hmm. uh, it, of all the of all the tribes of Israel it was the sons of Levi who said listen we are separating ourselves we will not take part right. in this incident and then God separates them to be the carriers and the protectors yes. of his presence. And that really speaks to me, bro. I know we did speak about the priesthood a little bit in a mm-hmm. previous podcast, but we are called, that's who we're called to be. Exactly. A chosen generation, yes. a royal priesthood. Where are the Levites today mm-hmm. who will say, listen, while the church world is doing this, the the and, and I'm not, I'm not. Uh, thickly painting a brush on sure, the church sure, world. Sure. I'm not. I'm not saying church world is bad, but within the church world, sure. there are many people who are not living yeah. holy lives. Yeah. Just like in Israel, like there in were Israel. many who were chosen that were not living holy That's lives. Right. Where are the people who would separate themselves? Come out from among them, says the yes. Lord, and be ye separate. I really believe that God is looking for a people like the sons of Levi yeah. who would choose to be separate. I love that, Nathan. Anything else in these first four chapters of the book of Numbers that stands out to you? You know, I would just say, Scott, it's another reminder of God's 
care, his meticulous attention. Uh, you know, sometimes I've heard it said before that the devil's in the details, right? Mm. And I know what people mean when they say that. I've probably said it before. Yeah. Um, but I don't love that because God's in the details, yeah. right? He cares about every intricate area. And so he cares about, in this case, how the tribes are accounted for, yeah. how they're arranged around the presence of God, yep. that there are a people set apart to minister to Him, that those people that are set apart to minister to Him are taken care of by mm. everybody else. Yeah. God puts a plan in place because He's a purposeful God. And so, uh, again, when people can read the book of Numbers, they can hear, oh, Numbers, it's just a bunch of census. It's just a bunch... Uh, actually, it's not. There are dynamic stories dynamic. and really powerful revelations of the heart of God. And in the things that could seem mundane, yeah. reading about how many people were in this tribe and how many people right. camped on this side, okay, what you need to see is... It was important to the Lord. Yeah. And Scott, my heart is, I pray, probably not always, but this is my hope, yeah. that my heart would be postured towards the Lord, that God, if it's important to you, I want it to be important to me. Yeah. Everything's not, I wish it was, I'm trying to get there, but that's my heart's cry. And if God's saying, hey, I see all of these, it's important to me, yeah. when I read through it, I just want to be reminded in all the details of my day that right. I'm worried about, the stuff that's going on in my work, my family, mm. God cares. I'm not yeah. going to bring anything to him where he's like, okay, seriously, I don't, yeah. I got bigger things to deal with. He's yeah. like, oh, is that important to you? Go to the nth detail. Tell me exactly what you want me yeah. to know. That's the heart of God. Yeah, I love it, bro. I really think that coming out of today's podcast, that there are people that are listening who are in the middle of a wilderness season. I really want to encourage you, embrace the wilderness. Embrace the trial. What does it say in the book of James, you know, uh, uh, about the, the joy of walking through yeah. a trial? Consider it pure joy. Consider yeah. it pure joy because there's something that's going to come out of the trial that will far surpass anything that you could have gained by not walking through it in the same way that Jesus came out of the wilderness in the power of of the Holy Spirit. Nathan, I really believe that as we embrace everything through which the Lord allows us to walk, we come through as gold, yeah. right? When he has tried yeah. me, I will come forth as gold. So I wanna pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the Levites who are separated because they separated themselves. They came out they were separate. And even in the wilderness, Lord, you chose to have your presence in the center of the children of Israel. Father, may we experience your presence. And for those who are watching and listening, who are walking through a wilderness place today, Lord, I pray that you would meet their needs exceedingly abundantly beyond all that they could have ever asked or imagined, and you be glorified. May you cause them to return from this wilderness walk in the power of your spirit and equipped for all that you have for them ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for watching and listening. I love that we get to come to you every week. Next week, we're diving in to the next section. We're going to be talking about the vow of the Nazarite, what it means to be separated unto God, and I really believe that you're going to be blessed. Please, 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 if you've not downloaded our TFI app, go to the App Store, type in Together for Israel, download the app. It has a bunch of free material and content on there. If you've not signed up for our trip to Israel, we still have spots on our November trip. You can go to our app or our website and click on that November trip. It's going to say that there's a waiting list there but we have room for you. So please be sure to sign up. We're gonna be getting extra rooms. I love you, I bless you, and I look forward to being with you next week on the Portions Podcast.